This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studio, not Mayhem Studio, in the uh, Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we got another great one here today. Of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Sister Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, Google Play Podcasts, and wherever you like to get your podcasts. Video versions are up on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. And keep an eye on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show and Indie wrestling.us for the live feeds check out the events to see uh when we're going to have people on sometimes it's on tuesday nights after the main show sometimes it's whenever we can get people in and uh we like to have you guys as part of the audience there asking questions of our guests if you'd like to hit us up with any questions in advance or have any suggestions on people we should talk to on the show please hit us up at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412-206-wms0 and you can support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show thank you everybody that puts into the kitty for the mayhem nation uh so this week of course um you know as you know i'm a video professional here in the area working with a lot of indie wrestling and uh somebody i got to uh film you know both at rwa and recently at the stomp out cancer event that was a great successful event um and down uh south of the city for a great cause and uh, uh, one of the great names on that was Honey Badger joining us here in the studio. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Are you, are you recovered from the Wrestling Mayhem show? Uh, I am. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm glad that you had fun on the show. Uh, and we learned a lot about you already, I think. <laughs> little tidbits. Little tidbits. So go go back and f- check out episode, uh, I believe it's 590 of Wrestling Mayhem show to see more Honey Badger. But uh, but. Uh, Anyways, we like to break the ice a little bit here on the show uh, by asking, what is your first memory of pro wrestling? I'm pretty sure it was my dad showing me a rerun of the Owen Hart incident, which is like a really good, like, hey, you should check this out. Wow. Here's this That's... terrible. And I was like little too. So. Yeah. But my dad was one of those people that when he found out he could record things off the TV, like with a VHS, like he was a magician. And really kind of leaned into it, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a treasure trove, like if it's even still there, because my dad would tape every episode of Raw and SmackDown and Velocity and Sunday Night Heat and like anything else wrestling related. So somewhere there are like ancient VHS tapes with like all the commercials and oh, like geez. the like there's so much gold on those I'm sure that are like long gone now like if I ever get my hands on them I'm totally like going to pay somebody to like convert them over um and I'm always interested in that because like I I I think I have a tape with like the original um one night stand broadcast where it has the original like you know inner sandman music and, and things that got cut out later if you go on the network you know mm-hmm. obviously things like the Owen Hart I, I don't even know if that shows on the network or or certain things with Chris Benoit you know um just kind of lost out there because of, I guess circumstance right like yeah. or even just like the um the ads for upcoming shows mm-hmm. were like so good then like there's one like I forget, I think it was for SummerSlam, and it was like a party, and like there's like different people running around, and like Kane pops a balloon that Eugene's <laughs> holding, like little stuff like that was like such like attention to detail. Like someone mm-hmm. was having a good time with that, but yeah, that those are somewhere those are sitting somewhere. So so so, so watching the incident, unfortunately, like <laughs> what 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 got you to like kind of continue to watch wrestling? Because that's the, I don't I don't know if that's the, I don't know where you go from that. Well, I just went with that's literally the first thing I remember. It's a weird bar um, to start with. Yeah, like I I don't even think I understood what happened. Mm-hmm. I was so young. But then it was really all oh, the characters because mm-hmm. I was always more about like I mean like don't, don't get me wrong like Austin like obviously is one of my favorite wrestlers and um 
know, The Rock was awesome and everything like that. But, like, I remember, like, characters. Like, I remember, like, Ministry of Darkness and um, obviously, like, The Undertaker. Um, like, even, like, we were talking about Val Venus earlier. And, like, you, you don't think of as a character. But, like, something as stupid as, like, he just put a white towel around his hips and, like, made movements that would probably make me uncomfortable now. But, like, that is, like, alone, like, a character. Like, he was just... So, so things like that. Um, and I really remember China. Like, China stood out. I think that's really where, like, my, like, interest, like, oh, I could totally do that, mm-hmm. like, started. Like, And I believe at the time, like, it was, like, it was all, like, bra and panties matches, and she was, like, the first one actually kind of wrestling in it, right? Yeah, she was at out the there, time. like, messing dudes up. And, mm-hmm. like, that's really, I think, what peaked it for me is, like, oh, my God, I totally want to be the chick, like, fighting dudes. And, like, she won the... um is it intercontinental title? She was like the first woman, I think like the only woman at this point to ever win that. Like that was like, for me, I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Awesome. So, so that was like kind of uh, an early kind of, I want to do this thing. Um, Did that stay with you kind of through watching? Were you starting to look for ways to get into wrestling at a a young age or or understanding what that opportunity was? I think the sad thing is I didn't know indie wrestling existed until like, been wrestling for like three years so like i didn't even know indie wrestling existed till like three years ago like i just assumed it was like the wwf slash e and then like i remember th- like my idea when i was younger of like what indie wrestling was is like oh well there's there's wcw and there's ecw <laughs> and like that's how i think i knew about ring of honor like barely mm-hmm. like that was my idea like oh that's where they start and then they get on TV, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's like where like I just I just didn't know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I mean, my dad would like take me to to events and stuff like that, which was which was cool. Um, but I think I just didn't even like see it as like like how do you even get into it? I I remember reading um Piper's book, and I was like, okay, I just have to run away from home. <laughs> Like okay, I, I can do that. That's I'm totally down with that. Was it was it? Were you reading a lot of wrestling books at the time, or just like specifically Piper's or? Um, Piper's like stood out the most because like I I loved Piper. Like he was mm. like like a favorite. Like probably my like first old man crush, like ever. <laughs> like that's probably where that started too. But like I had his. I had the Rock's book. Um, who else did I have? I think I had so, just so, like a gen, gen like a general one like that like someone put out about wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um I think that was it all I had as like a kid. So so if you didn't go for football in college like the rock no. <laughs> or anything like that. No. You know, you didn't didn't get adopted by a Samoan family. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that, that that didn't happen either. Awesome. So so what did you like actually, you know, find training and and discover in the wrestling? Uh, as an option then um that was kind of crazy that that's totally one of those like like right place right time like everything like nothing's a mistake so i um i started doing things for the it's a live show which is a local horror host show in pittsburgh um i actually started dating the the host who's now my husband and um, I started playing a character, but then on top of that, I started doing things with like advertising and uh, sponsors. Mm-hmm. And um, my, I think it was even my husband who said, you know, there's a wrestling show like on the channel. Like we were on some like shitty Verizon channel. Like it was like some channel, like no one's even going to find that by accident. I'm guessing WBGN. I think it was WBGN. I, I think that they had that around the time where, where there, were sh- there were shows on there. Yeah, that was like because this was after like the whole fallout with um another cable provider. But um yeah, we were just like on there, um and I was like, Oh, that's that's pretty cool. And I didn't even think of like, oh cool, like I'll see what that's about. Like I was totally in business mode and like I'm gonna talk to them about cross promotion. So I reached out to um the owner, it was actually PWX and um I was just like, uh, oh, yeah, like, we should do some stuff, and, like, we'll just... They didn't want to buy any advertising, um, so I was talking about, well, we could just trade. You know, you just... You put our commercial on your deal, we'll put your commercial on ours, and um, 
I, I think we were just like talking and he's he was like I was like oh yeah I've been a wrestling fan since I was yo big and they were like well why don't you come down you could check out the show talk to the trainers and that's really how I got like into it like I went down and like my I was just like oh my god this is like where has this world been my entire life um so I I started um training there under Brandon K and Dean Radford um I had like a lot of trainers which is like not surprising to me because I was like a problem, not a problem child, but like I was difficult to train. I feel like, like, um, like just having trouble kind of getting the concepts down or, um, yeah, I just, I wasn't like in the, I like wasn't in good physical shape. Like I was in worse physical shape than I am now, but like I really didn't do anything other than soccer. Mm-hmm. Like soccer was the big fit sport thing for me, like growing up. And then like that stopped it. Um, high school when I started like moving around and like like I moved out of like my parents home and I was kind of like jumping around just trying to get like finish high school and um so other than that I really didn't like do anything like there was like one point in my life like before this that before I started training that like I was really like heavy into the gym and I was you know like I was actually skinny once and like like going like I remember one time I was at the gym so long that the guy I was dating at the time actually called me and was like, are you coming home? Because you've been there for hours. And I was like, yeah. So I, I would like to get back there at some point um, once his shoulder heals up. But, um, yeah, and and I just started training there. But, like, I trained under mainly Brandon and Dean. Um, Crusher Hansen came in. He did a lot with me. Um, Chris LaRusso was still at the school at the time. So um, I think it took him and Crusher, like, three days to teach me a hip toss. So, like, God bless them. <laughs> Um, Quinn Magnum helped me out a lot too. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was really fortunate where I got a lot of different styles and a lot of different knowledge. It's really, it's like, those are names that I hear individually with people a lot. Like, it sounds like you got, you got a lot of, uh, kind of exposure with that. That's awesome. Yeah. Even like Doe, like, um, Doe, I would just sit there and like pick his brain. Like we immediately Mm -hmm. bonded over like bands and stuff. Um, So then on top of that, for like him to just tell me like stories or like if I was having trouble with something, I'd go to him and Mm -hmm. like he's just such a a wealth of knowledge on his own. So Mm -hmm. I I was really fortunate that I I had that group of people. Like I still do um, for the most part, like still have that group of people just to even go to be like, hey, can you look at this tape or, you know, hey, um, I, I ran into this. Like, what's your opinion? Awesome. So how did the the idea, you know, the character of kind of Honey Honey Badger come to be? Um I mean, I I pretty much just like channel a lot of things. Like I don't want it to sound stereotypical, but like, you know, I was like I've always been a bigger person and um like not taken seriously a lot, like mm-hmm. whether it's by family or you know, like people in school. Um so I think it was just using that to my advantage. Where it's like, you know, like like the the animal honey badgers. Like if you ever see one, they don't they don't look intimidating. Like they're actually pretty weird looking. Like they're these just short, stocky animals. They're kind of ugly, um, and they just like don't look very intimidating. They're pretty quiet, but then you piss them off, and it's a whole nother. Like they're just like they're known in the Guinness World Book of Records as like the animal that will fuck you up the most. Like they're not anything to mess with. Um, so I just think taking that and like, you know, like my whole life, I think I've been looking for my tribe and then I realized like, well, fuck that. I'll just be my own tribe. So I think I take a lot of that into the ring with me. Um, and just like, you know, just being very unorthodox. Like, like we were talking earlier about how I eliminated somebody in the, um, I was up at Rockstar, um, for Ludus, I think it was 14 and there was a battle Royal and, um, it Tom McLean on the ass and it eliminated him from, and I like ended up being like one of the last like three somehow mm-hmm. in this battle Royal. Um, I don't know how I held so on that long. Obviously hindered gender. Like how, how many other women were in, in the one, match? like one other. Yeah. Um, there are other main girl they had up there and I feel so terrible that I can't remember her name. Um, but she was really, she was really fun to work. We, we they did um, a little bit here and there, but um, yeah, just, just really not afraid to be a little unorthodox and a little out of the norm. That's awesome. 
Um, yeah, I think the first time I, we saw you, I was mentioning a little bit, you know, we went to a PWX for, for me, first time in a long time, first time for a friend. And uh, you were on the card, I think, back in January. And, you know, kind of used to kind of, say, the typical girls starting out, right, uh, kind of all look the same. And you really stuck, you know, stuck out of the character and everything. And I think at the time you might have been affiliated with uh, Beastman, maybe. Yeah, me and Beastman were doing right? a little bit here and there. Um, mm. and, just just and then, made sense. And another, yeah, again, another kind of unorthodox, you know, Beastman. You can kind of think where he goes with it, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's there's difference between like, um, like I obviously can talk. Yeah. Um, and I can. You know, like I'm, I'm more paying homage to my spirit animal. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I don't think Beastman knows where he is half the time. But um, yeah, both just kind of like using that like animalistic instinct, like that primal instinct in the ring. Like that's kind of where. Um, but going back to like characters, like like when I knew, like because I knew I had to pick a look, like going out there, and um, you know, like there is that pressure, like in women's wrestling, like. You know, especially for me, like being like plus size, it's like, well, how do I go out there and be sexy? Like one, I don't want to be sexy. Like I've never, I've never been into that. Like the whole divas thing. And like, mm-hmm. I was never a fan of that. Um, like that's why people like, like, like Bull Nakano is like one of my heroes because she went out there. I mean, she had crazy hair. She had face paint and she just went out there and just wanted to hurt somebody. Like half the time she wasn't even worried about winning, which is like kind of what I pull too. Like, I just like, I don't really care if I win. I don't care if I'm a champion, but I do want to care about like, when I walk away from the ring, they're going to be like, Oh, she fucked her up. Mm -hmm. Like, so just, just, that's my, that's my main focus there. That's awesome. Uh, so, you know, who are you watching? Like kind of, kind of these days, like, is there anybody that, that gets your attention at at this stage of the game, kind of your inspiration, um, or, or anything like that? Other, you know, obviously Bull Bacano in the past. Um, yeah, I, I, I tend to watch a lot of older stuff. I'll be honest. I have a hard time watching the newer stuff. Um, just because I don't mean like there's a lot of great talent. I did watch the May young classic, mm-hmm. um, which was really awesome to see. Um, but I, I really have a hard time with, I feel like once they move someone over to the main roster, like from NXT, like they just really take away a lot of their, I don't want to say potential. I want to say like how they can use them. So I try to not watch it. I, I don't watch too much of the main stuff. Um, I, I did notice Nikki cross right away for obvious reasons. It was funny at, at first I was trying to like deny that we look similar um, in mannerisms and every, and even just, you know, both short um, stocky girls. And then uh, Duke Davis was like, no, my buddy texted me and asked if that was you. I was like, shit. But, um, yeah, I, I usually watch like the most stuff I watch, honestly, like if it's not like older um, stuff or um, Lee Moriarty really got me into progress. So I've been watching a lot of progress and keeping my own Lucha Underground because mm-hmm. they started doing a lot of intergender and things like that. But I honestly watch more like like if I have a match, I will really stalk my opponent, like just try to find every clip. It doesn't matter how old it is. Um, but that's just cause I like to know like what's their style, what's their finisher. Um, you know, like if they do a move, I do, I'm not gonna, you know, that I don't want to roll in there and be like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, so like I'll, I'll watch a lot of like older stuff like that. Um, that's really, that's really it. I try to keep an eye on like if someone's like moving up very quickly in the Indies, um, like I, I was gonna, I, I had a match with her back in, um, December with Tessa Blanchard. Um, So I I started watching a lot of her stuff, but I kept watching her stuff just because like, she's very good at what she does. Like obviously she's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Including the May Young class. Amazing match of May Young in the first round. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. She, they, they, both of them Mm -hmm. like blew the doors off that place with that match. Um, And uh, so, so I usually try to keep an eye on like someone who like everyone's the buzz is about. Cause I want to be like, well, what are they doing that, they're just steadily increasing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I do catch some of the um, main roster stuff because um, some of it's just entertaining now. Like I, like I said, I'm into characters. So like, like, and so, and uh, you know, the new day and stuff like that. Like if they're genuinely like funny or entertaining, 
um, or just athletically entertaining in the ring, um, then I'll, I'll keep an eye on them. But it, I kind of come and go. Awesome. Uh, how long have you been at this at this point? I want to say three years. Okay. It all kind of blends together. And it was tricky, too, because um, I started training and then I had to take time off for the It's Alive show with mm-hmm. like stuff we were doing there. Um, and then I, I went back. So it was kind of weird. It was like I got through almost like that 90 day um, probation period mm-hmm. and then took some time off and then came back and had to kind of like... Um, you know, get back in the swing of things. But yeah, it's been about three, I want to say three years. And, and you mentioned yeah, it's, it's a live show. You know, you're working kind of production kind of, you know, on that side of things. Uh, and I just listened to another podcast, which was specifically uh, uh, Don Castle on Nicole Cabanas, talking about how he took like production and everything like that. And that really helped him into wrestling. Did you find some advantages from your experience on that project going into this, at least like on the uh, presentation uh, side or anything like that? Um, it definitely helped. I mean, um, my husband was really the one who really helped like find that character, which it was always there, but it was just like realizing it was there. Um, cause every, cause like other people wanted me, they're like, oh, you should be like the goth wrestler. Cause there's no goth female wrestlers or like dark. They're probably a bunch demented. like 15 years ago, Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, or like the demented or the crazy chick. And I was mm. like, that's like, I, I wanted something to stand out because the thing was like with, with training, like I don't, I don't really do like anything fancy. I'm more mm. just like ground and pound and like classic. Like I, I like to refer to sometimes as classic, but like, I don't, I don't do that stuff because like, so my thing was like, well this, like you even said like that, like that, like my image had to stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's why, it makes sense like now, like why I watched so much McFoley stuff like back in the day, like all, I mean all his, his different characters, but like that was someone who knew how to use that gimmick to its fullest potential. And stuck out on a roster where he wasn't um, physically advantaged. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, cause like I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm honestly, I'm not gonna like out, I'm not going to do a moonsault or like a shooting star right. press or something like right. that. Like I'm just not, one, I don't feel like I'm made for it. Like, I know what my strengths and my weaknesses are. And, like, mm-hmm. there's always room for improvement. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to try to learn something that, you know, stands out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, even though, like, I did learn. Like, I, I would still like to learn the fundamentals because, like, I had a um a seminar with uh, DJ Z. And it was funny because he made us. He's like, nope, we're going to do Lucha stuff. And I was like, I don't do Lucha stuff. He's like, you are today. And, uh. It was, among, if there's ever, like, I don't think there's footage of it, but, like, just watching me trying to do, like, some of that was just, like, and, I mean, we got through it, and we ended up having, like, a lot of fun, but he had a fantastic point at the end. He's, like, the more versatile you are, like, even if you go somewhere and they don't want you to do that, if you can say, yeah, I can do that, like, that's going to add to your resume because you just, like, he really taught us, like, you just want to be, like, the complete package, which sounds like a lot of pressure, but... It, it totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's like if you don't have anything like that, someone can say like, "Oh, well, yeah, they have this, but they don't have that." Then that just totally like ups your um, I guess your selling value. It, it kind of reminds me, and I've heard his conversations on other interviews, and when we had him early last year, um, and just conversations with him, uh, you know, it 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 it's uh. You know, you think of like Stone Cold Steve Austin, like he was the ground and pound when he was Stone Cold, but then you would have a match with Regal and you're just like, oh, wait, he can go. And then remember, he was the, he was like the guy that was having classic matches with Steamboat, right? Right. <laughs> like like five years before that no, may, not as many people paid attention to, you know, and it's, it's really cool that, you know, that exists, right? Right. But I'd rather use that as like, like I'd like. You know, I'd rather pull that out in a match right, and someone be right. like, holy shit, like, where did yeah. that come from? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, like, it, it just totally helps to, like, have all, you know, all those different parts, like, kind of like how um, Z was explaining. Awesome. Um, I, I, I also noticed, because I think I saw you at the, the furry parade. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I um, My friends convinced me to go and I had never been there. And um, I don't. 
Like I, I was I really not don't... in the furry parade. I no, not in the yeah. But yeah I was, I I was the on the other side of the barricades, and I looked over. I was like, is that honey badger? That's just straight up honey badger over there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just me being a sarcastic asshole. I was like, I'm just gonna go there as honey badger and <laughs> pretend like I got booked for. That's awesome. For the furry convention. That's great. I'm just like, is she a furry? Is that like There is part someone of it, in or? Pittsburgh though that like if you're out there, mm-hmm. like I'm totally looking to like hire you. There is someone in Pittsburgh who goes to like all the Pittsburgh cons and has like a life size like honey badger furry type mm-hmm. costume. I mean, I'm talking like it's not even like a mascot, like it's cute. Right. right. It's like um like how do I want to say it? It's like realistic. Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of creepy, but it's like full like fur and claws and this realistic like fiberglass like f- face. And it's I'm like, yeah, that like I don't really have a mascot, but like if I was gonna have somebody come out with me, that would be that the is person. like like for whatever the WrestleMania is of whatever promotion you're at <laughs> right. at the time, like. This is where we bring out the honey badger, right? Right, <laughs> right. which I've I've kind of done that before. I got a um, I got a lot of good reviews. Um, I had um, my I have two friends um, who uh, are like known throughout the city for like burlesque and like their go go dancing, and I had them like wear kind of like badgerish looking stuff, and they did like kind of like creepy. Not I don't want to say creepy, but just like for that crowd, they probably saw it as creepy. Mm-hmm. But like I had them come out and do like tribal like dancing, like as I went out for my title match with Tessa, and like a lot of people didn't get it. Like a lot of the fans didn't get it, which I was kind of bummed out. But like workers were like, "You need to bring them in every single time," and I was like joking. Um, and, and this is kind of when things start. I was getting really enlightened to the the world of wrestling. I was like, oh, I, I, can't, I don't think I can pay them every single time I have a match. And they're like, oh, you, oh, don't pay them. Get someone to do it for free. And I was like, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, but that could be interesting. It could be like Dalton Castle's voice to a certain point, right? Like right. having that kind of like back. Uh, about backup dancer but you know yeah and and that's that's kind of what it it was and it and i just like the idea of coming out with like other women and like just being you know what i mean because like i really try to stay away from having like a manager or even like even with the beast man thing like if mm-hmm. it didn't make so much sense like i wasn't a hundred like i wasn't about it at first um because like like i'm pretty much like a loner like i can handle my own mm-hmm. type thing but um I just, I, I just thought it was like awesome to like just come out like surrounded by like other empowering women and stuff like that, which I would like just to see more of like in wrestling. I mean, we've pretty much gotten away from it at this point, but like there's still the, there's still like a little bit of, of that. Awesome. What is the best and worst thing about your experiences with indie wrestling so far? Oh boy. Um, I'm going to start with the best because the the worst. I'm going to try not to go on a tangent. Um, Probably the best is just like I've I've found like such a family. Um, Like I've never really had like one much of like family family or like I I really didn't have like like I have like a a pocket full of like really close friends. Um, But just like the people that I've met who like were like the really like good bunch and just like people who like genuinely care. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I value that the most, like the fact that like someone will even just like have a conversation with me. I'm like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. I'm going to try and say anything weird so you don't go away. Um, but like that and, um, just like, like the fans, um, I know that sounds like cheesy, but like, I mean it more in like the sense, like that's like where like the payoff is, Mm -hmm. Um, like anytime, like there's like little girls coming up and saying like, I just, I want to be like you, like I, like you make me want to go be like, I had a mom write me one time after her daughter met me up at a mega championship wrestling and was like, you know, my daughter was like really depressed. She's going through a lot in school. And she asked me the next day to like sign her up for like the gym at the Y and now she wants to. And I was like, it like, I don't like, it's like hard to really get like a tear out of me Mm -hmm. but i was like bawling um because it was just like that's that's why like that's why all the shittiness like that's what it's for so that was awesome that's awesome 
and and and, and the bad without a tangent. <sighs> To like sum it up, like there's a reason I call professional wrestling my favorite abusive ex boyfriend, um, because you really do have to just learn um, to have thick skin. Um, there's there's just a lot um, with you know like I I think it's really it won't it's at this point it's like it's like one level above carnies at this point, um, but there's this thing, and I mean, it's it's in other circles too. Don't get me wrong; like musicians go through it, artists definitely go through it. Where it's like, oh, you're good at something, okay? Here, you're gonna you want to do it for nothing. Um, so I I think it's just trying to have pe- help. The worst thing is trying to make people understand like your love for it, mm-hmm. like like trying to explain to somebody like why I, you know, on my only day off, like drive two and a half hours in one direction to get to a show, set up, um try to like have like a really good match um not get paid and then drive another two and a half hours back and then do it all over again next weekend um so i really just hope like something something really changes in the future um and i'm like not saying like i'm some like five star like i have i have ways i have miles to go to get where i like hope to see myself one day so like i'm not saying it's just me i'm just saying in general like i've seen it happen to like so many of my friends and it's like really infuriating when like someone I see who's like super talented um it just get treated like terribly by like promoters and not every promoter's like that um but like it, it's like anything you know there's 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 the handful and it's just like I really just hope people start respecting like what we're doing because like other it's not like musician and artists where like you know they get ripped off a lot too but like musicians and artists usually aren't risking breaking their neck and affecting the rest of their lives and their families. So uh, I, unless you're Marilyn Manson. Huh? Unless you're Marilyn Manson falling off equipment. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. 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 Unless that, but I think, I think he was, I don't know. I saw that clip and I was like, you couldn't tell that that was like not something you should climb on. Yeah. Yeah. So again, that's one of those also things. Like, lesson, do your research. Also a lesson for some wrestlers on there that like to climb on things too. Yeah, see, that's where, like, I was so lucky with my training. Like, something as simple as, like, being taught how to go out and test the ring. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you don't have a chance to go out and test the ring before you get to the venue. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where I was so lucky with my trainers that, like, I can definitely say, like, I consider myself safe. Like, I may not be, like, the most flashiest wrestler, but I was definitely taught how to protect people and protect myself. And I definitely value that over everything. Mm -hmm. Um. But, like, even just something as simple as, like, how to go out there and test the ring without no one, like, noticing it, it is, like, again, you have to kind of do your research. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you so much for talking with us. Uh, I know you're kind of uh, on the mend right now. Yeah, unfortunately, I did get hurt at the Stomp Out um, cancer show. I tore my uh, labrum and my rotator cuff. Maybe um, maybe stomped a little too hard I, at I Stomp might Out have, Cancer. I might have. Um, it's funny if my trainer's seeing this, he's going to yell at me. Cause when he tore his rotator cuff, I was always on his ass about like, why aren't you in your sling and <laughs> everything? And I'm not wearing mine tonight, but, um, yeah, hopefully I'm really hoping, um, like come like the holiday, like Christmas time, I'll be, I'll be back. Um, cause I definitely have like unfinished business and I just, I have goals that I, I will accomplish. Um, so once this is a hundred percent back and not at risk of just falling my shoulder not falling off like Mm -hmm. that's it like it's exaggerating but like it could literally happen um but yeah once i get back i'll I'll definitely be um probably in a couple promotions Mm -hmm. you got a question chad yeah yeah chad's Uh, here chad the chad or chad the enzo as some may know him from the main show um i if i'm usually here for some of the interviews i ask this question uh what is your favorite move that you currently do not perform Ooh. Um, I would, I would probably say, um, oh man, you got me. I'm like trying to think, see, it's like tricky. Cause like, I'm trying to think of like, one of the things I have to remember is like when I'm watching like Bull Nakano or Kong matches or like Jessica Havoc, 
I'm like I like idolize them and like what they're doing but then I have to remember that I'm like not six foot something so I usually usually can't do that probably just like a power bomb like I would like I I if I power bomb somebody I will be shocked <laughs> just because I'm not exactly the the tallest person out there so it would probably look like like just like an awkward like hug if I tried <laughs> to do like a power bomb like I have to remember that like and that's like it's like something too like I have to really remember like in my head, mm-hmm. I'm I'm like six foot something and huge. And then I look at film and I'm like, oh my, I'm, I'm barely as tall as the ropes. Cool. Mm-hmm. And there's the, there's I, I I've seen that too where like I'll see uh, some girls wrestle and then they're wrestling something that's like super tiny and then they're doing power moves. Too. I mean, if it was like, don't get me wrong, like if I take on someone like Angel Dust, yeah, who like, you know, I mean, she compared to me, she is very petite. Yeah. Um, that's different. Like I'll definitely change up like my, my offense, but like you're never, like I should never be doing power moves with like 90% of my matches. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So where can people find you on social media online or where do you usually pop up, uh, on the Indies? Um, you can find me online. I'm on Facebook, uh, my full name, Regina Badger. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, at Regina H Badger and Twitter, I think is at Regina honey badger. I don't know. I don't know how to use Twitter. Um, but, uh, you can find me there. And then, um, I'm mainly at RWA right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I, I've been kind of just popping up here and there, usually in the Pittsburgh, like Ohio area, a little bit of West Virginia. Like I've done stuff with like black diamond, um, would like to be doing more with like mega. So I think we'll, we'll have stuff in the works there. Um, definitely going to see me up at rise sooner than later, um, for Brandon K. But, uh, yeah, I would definitely keep an eye on rise. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff going on down there. I got to see a show a couple months ago and I, I like to see a lot of, I see a lot of potential in that new promotion down there. Yeah. So, so that's Connell, uh, our union town, Connellsville, Connellsville, Lamont furnace, I think officially is the title of the town so which i didn't know because i'd been there before and i was like i thought this is connellsville but <laughs> i don't know when you get out the outskirts down, down there it's all meshes in my head by the way two people are asking why you're not in the sling like real talk <laughs> oh who is it i can't see it. uh we'll say jason and ernie out there oh god yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> see i knew i knew my trainer was gonna my trainer um in there i knew he was gonna get on me about that <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I can't wait to see you in action when you come back, uh, at least in RWA and wherever else we can get out to see you, of course. Uh, Keep an eye on the social media, I guess, for updates at least, right? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Uh, And you guys can check everything out. And again, drop us a line, anybody you think we should be talking with in the future or questions for anybody we have on the schedule. You can see that schedule over on our Facebook page of Wrestling Mayhem Show or over at IndieWrestling.us to see who and where and when uh, that's going to happen. Uh, thank you so much to my guests. Thank you, everybody, who popped in on the chat room here on this uh, late recording. And we'll see you guys next time. And until, next, until then, support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.